Okay, we were taking another integral. We've got the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x to the n dx. This came up recently in a video I did where I did the, basically the same problem, but n was three. And there was a suggestion in the comments from David Kravitz that we could actually generalize this to any n. I do wanna put one restriction on this though. We want n to be greater than zero. So what I wanna do is basically the same kind of steps I did in that other video. We wanna set this up to use the gamma function. And what I'm gonna to do to start is let's make a u substitution for all of this right here. So I'll say u is gonna be equal to x to the n. Derivative of x to the n is gonna be n times x n minus one dx. And then I'll rearrange this just to solve for dx. So basically dividing by this stuff on both sides, this is gonna become one over n, reverse the exponent, we get x to the one minus n du. But then let's get this value here in terms of u. So coming back here, if I just take the one over n power on both sides of this, then we're gonna have x is gonna be equal to u to the one over n. Then I'll take this and insert it in here. So we're gonna have one over n, this is gonna become u to the one minus n over n du. So now we'll just go ahead and substitute this. So first take the infinity, plug in here, infinity to the n, that's just gonna be infinity. That's where the condition's important, of course, because if n happened to be negative, then it wouldn't be infinity anymore, it'd be going to zero. Then plugging in zero here, this is gonna give me zero for the lower bound. Then here, this thing is gonna become just e to the minus u. Next, we're gonna have our dx value. For the one over n, that's a constant. Let's bring that out front of the integral. Then for the rest of it, we're gonna have u one minus n over n du. But now here, what I wanna do is, let's just actually rewrite this value right here real quick. If I take one minus n over n and we divide in the n, this is gonna be one over n minus one. So let's just write it this way. And now at this point, this is perfectly set up for us to use the gamma function. Okay, looking at our formula down here to the right, the thing to notice, so like the integral, we're integrating with respect to x here, but the input for the gamma function, the gamma function is a function in terms of t, and our t is right there. So coming back to what we have here, we're integrating with respect to u, but this whole thing's gonna be the gamma function with respect to the exponent here. So what we can do is say this whole thing is just gonna be the gamma function of one over n, and we still have this one over n in front. And then at this point, we're basically done, but we can use another formula if we wanna just try to kind of clean this up. We have this formula for the gamma of x plus one. I don't wanna use n as we're using it right there then this can be written as x times gamma of x. So what we can do for this here is just kind of using it in the other direction because one over n, one over n, these values are the same. That's like our x here. So what I can do is write this as like our x plus one, we can write this as gamma of one over n plus one. And I think this might be the best way to express our solution. So like in that other video that I did previously, when we had n equals three, then on that one we got gamma of four thirds. Now, one thing you can do with this, the gamma function can also be expressed in terms of factorials. So for a factorial, this would end up being one over n factorial. So depending on your perspective, this could be a problem. Like in that previous video, this gamma of four thirds, we could write this as one third factorial. Now, generally I think for a non-integer value, people would prefer the gamma function, but you could do it either way. You'd also get some nice values of say like n was one half because if n is one half, you plug it in here, you're gonna end up with gamma of three, and that would be the same thing as two factorial or just two. So that's not a bad one. But looking at this, you can clearly see why zero is a problem, is then we'd be dividing by zero in this formula here. Anyway, interesting integral today. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.